So let's start with the first presentation on uh, the overview of international protocol for the inspection of ventilation system. As I said, uh, in Europe, really the inspection of ventilation system is becoming a, a really big subject of interest. We have tighter and tighter building now, and we need to make sure that the ventilation system is working properly to avoid mold growing in the residential building and problem of indoor quality everywhere. So the European Com Com Commission has funded a project which was a feasibility study to identify the need, possibilities and timeline for introduction of inspection of standalone ventilation system in building. So it was a project that has been done uh, two years ago and that has as uh, the output of this project were a review of existing regulations, guidelines and standards, uh, information on how to build an inspe in inspection schemes, and what could be other measures and inspection when we cannot perform inspection and the impact analysis of six policy options. So if the inspection of ventilation system is interesting for you, I would really greatly recommend to download this, uh, this report. You have also information on this report about the stock and the market of ventilation system in Europe, which may be of interest also. Uh, some, yeah. Uh, just to give you a small overview of what is uh, discussed in this report, it was gathering uh, details on 20 protocols of inspection of ventilation system from nine countries. And, uh, well, most of those uh, protocols were not mandatory. It's just guidelines that the owner, for example, of the building can uh, well, inspections that the owner can ask to perform to make sure that his system is, uh, is in good shape. But in some countries, those were mandatory protocol already implemented, such as in Ireland, Belgium, well, in Flanders, Sweden, Canada, Finland, and Poland. Well, those protocol mostly deal both for with residential and non-residential buildings. Some protocol only deal with the uh, residential buildings. Usually in those protocol, uh, when they are mandatory, usually it's mostly an independent inspector that uh, is allowed to perform the to perform the inspection. But well, the, when the protocol is not mandatory, it can be anyone from the designer to the installer, the maintenance staff, etc. Usually, the inspection of ventilation system focus on indoor air quality and uh, sometimes also an energy performance, acoustic and thermal comfort. But when they are mandatory, it's usually mostly deal on uh, indoor quality of the performance in terms of indoor quality of the ventilation system. Usually the inspection is done once, only once, and not after on a regular basis, for example, every 10 years or something like that. This is the opposite of what is done in Germany, has done with presenters uh, where it's done after and not at commissioning. But in most cases, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's done just once at commissioning. In addition to this study, we have uh, to the EPBD 19A study, we have done some uh, other research to try to find out also very some specificity to know how it was really implemented in um, in practice, those inspection. And one big question usually when we ask how the inspection of ventilation system is done is how non-conformities are handled. With building air tightness, usually you say, okay, you need to be at 0 0.6. So below 0 0.6, it's okay. Above 0 0.6, it's not okay. This is for air tightness, just one indicator, very hazy. For ventilation system, usually you have a lot of things to check and sometimes it can be good in this dwelling, but in this dwelling, you have an air terminal device that do not provide exactly the flow rate. So is it good? Is it not good? What should be done? In some country, like in Ireland and Sweden, when you've got a non-conformity, you should correct it. And But, but this can be quite challenging. Uh, Belgium has had another approach, quite interesting approach, actually, in my view, is that some non-conformity needs to be corrected because they are, well, otherwise the system does not work properly, but some additional non-conformity, I would say subsidiary or something like that, you may not correct it, but if you do not correct it, then you have to pay a fine, uh, yeah, to have a financial compensation for not 
providing a system that is perfectly conform to the regulation. Um, also interesting is the approach to define whether a dwelling is conform or not. Uh, in some country, for dwelling to be conform, you need to have the flow rate in each room, exactly the required flow rate in each room. What is important, for example, in France and in Ireland is that for the full dwelling, you've got the total flow rate that is conform. This is important things to see when you want to do uh, an inspection standard at European level. That's every country has a different approach, in fact. So thank you for your attention. And I also thank the BCCA and INE for, for funding this study. So this study, yeah, and uh, all the survey respondents to that have to, to compare those uh, inspection regulations.